So in the specific field of anorectal malformations and cloaca, you would not believe that, but in 1980, we were trying to repair the malformation without really knowing the intrinsic anatomy. I wasn't happy about that, and therefore I decided to approach these malformations in a different way, to open in between both buttocks of the baby, because by doing that, I, I was able to see the crucial, the, dead, the important and anatomic facts of the urogenital tract. So when I opened for the first time on August 10 of 1980, I found an anatomic facts that were not described and certainly completely different to what people was thinking at that time. So, and then once you find the abnormality right there, then you conceive the rational way to repair that. And that's what we did with the anorectal malformations in male patients. Then I, I used to read about this malformation called cloaca. Female babies, rather than being born with three orifices, urethra, vagina, and rectum, they are born with a single orifice. And that single orifice communicates with a single channel that then trifurcates into bladder, uh, and vagina, and rectum. So it came up to, me idea, to, to my mind that perhaps I could repair that cloaca malformation using the same approach that we call posterior sagittal approach. So in, in 1982, I was invited to operate the first uh, cloaca with this approach. The original approach to the cloaca, the treatment will consist in separating the rectum from the vagina and pull it down to put it in the best possible place where the, there's more concentration of muscle to give bowel control. And then separate the vagina from the urethra and pull it down, pull it in the normal location and then reconstruct what used to be the common channel as a new urethra. But one day I found that you could separate the rectum and then rather than separating the vagina from the urethra, which is a very so a sophisticated technique, you could mobilize urethra and vagina together down, and, uh, which is something much easier and much faster with less blood loss. And we call that total urogenital mobilization. The complexity of the procedure and the functional results depend on the length of that common channel. 